Hey everyone, in this video we're going to do something a bit different in that we're going to do a book review on the Road to Latin textbook from 1932. So while Latin is still uh, very far from being the most popular language for students to study these days, there's still a pretty wide variety of textbooks to choose from. So with so many options, there's always this constant debate among students and teachers where we ask ourselves, which is the, the best textbook, right? Which one should be using? And I'll just spoil the ending, out, uh, the ending now and tell you that there is no perfect textbook, right? And there's no one textbook textbook that's the best. But hopefully with this video, um, if I can make some more on different textbooks, you know, I can show you a little bit um, about what this textbook is good at, what it's not good at, give you some insights. Um, so that if you're a Latin teacher or a student, you might think about using it or at least taking a look at it. Okay. So as I said, today's video is on the 1932 textbook, The Road to Latin. So I'll try to be as unbiased as I possibly can, but I'll admit that this is the textbook that I use in my own classes. So I teach middle school and high school Latin. So that being said, if you follow my channel, you already know that. Um, and you know that I've adapted this textbook to make it my own and I don't necessarily follow the original version. At the same time, um, I'm not the author and I don't have any ownership of this text. So I'll try to give you a blunt and honest opinion because it really has nothing to do with me, right? I'm not offended either way. But if you are new to uh, The Road to Latin, hopefully this will give you a chance to have a nice introduction and then you can go off and check it out for yourself and make your own uh, conclusions and decisions, okay? So to start, let's talk about the authors. So as you can see here, um, the, the authors, you have um, Helen Chestnut, um, Martha Olivenbaum, and Nellie Rosebaugh, right? Those are the three main authors. And you can see here, they all have um, masters or bachelors, right? Um, and then you have an editor, right? E.B. de Sose, I'm going to try to pronounce that right, um, who is the director of foreign languages from Cleveland, right? The Cleveland Board of Ed. So these uh, authors are all coming out of Cleveland, which is really cool. So the first thing that you might notice um, that makes it unique is that it's written by three women, which you just don't really see in textbooks from the 1930s, right? The field of classics, right? Studying Latin, um, Greek, ancient history in, in particular has been dominated by men, right? That's just what it is. It's like kind of an elite uh, thing to be reading. So to have a textbook written by three women, I think is really cool and gives a different perspective that you just don't see in a lot of other textbooks. So the person or the author that I want to focus on that I know the most about, I'll admit, um, trying to dig up information about um, some of the other authors, I haven't been able to find a ton on them. But Helen Marie Chestnut is one that we do know a good amount um, about. It has nothing to do with me. So in particular, I just want to highlight Chestnut and tell you that I first found about uh, found out about her in this text a few years ago. So I can't take any credit at all for rediscovering um, the Road to Latin textbook or uh, Helen Chestnut. Um, that had nothing to do with me. But once others did and kind of let me know about it, um, I found out that she was a really fascinating character. And I love telling her story to my students um, because it really resonates with them. And a lot of them are surprised by who wrote the textbook that we use. So Chestnut, is one of the few well-known um, female classicists of her time. Again, you don't see <clears throat> a lot of women in this field. And I'll just pause and tell you from my own experience, um, I had a, a college professor uh, who was a woman, a very well-known one, um, who has written a lot of books, really, really awesome um, person. And I found a great professor. And she told us once that when she was studying um, classics, I believe it was in the 70s, she was straight up told, you know, don't come to class. Why are you doing this? You're a woman, right? She, she would talk about uh, review sessions with the professor where she wasn't invited. So this idea of women being excluded from uh, classics um, is pretty, uh, fairly recent, right? It's not just in the 1930s. You can go to the 1970s, 80s, whatever. Um, there's a lot of people who have felt this kind of push to, uh, to push them out of studying this topic. So the fact that we have Helen Chestnut and her authors is really, really cool, right? So she's also one of the first African-American graduates from Smith College, which is really cool. Again, you can look that up. And she ended up teaching Latin at Central High School in Cleveland. So one thing I found interesting, and again, I didn't dig this up, someone did, is that one of her students was Langston Hughes, which I thought was really, really cool, right? And you can kind of see that if you if you were a, a student in her class, having a, a woman teaching you Latin and a woman of color, right, an African-American woman, that would have been really impactful. So I think she's just a really fascinating character and one I'd encourage you to look into. And the other cool thing about her is she was elected to the executive committee of the American Philological Association, which again, these are things that you just wouldn't expect for a woman, you know, uh, uh, working in the 1920s and 30s, um, particularly a, a, an African-American woman, you just wouldn't expect that. So I think her story is really, really great. And right off the bat, I'll tell you, I think um, Chestnut and her co-authors, they lend their voice to this text in a very unique way. And I feel like you can see them through the way that the textbook works, right? You can kind of get a very strong sense of who they are. So I think that's really cool and uh, worth pointing out as we start. So what did the authors say about their textbook? Well, <clears throat> you can actually... Um, 
see this if you read through the, the Road to Latin textbook. Um, the authors lay out their intentions in the preface, which I think is really worth reading. So if you read this, they say <clears throat> that they've endeavored to present in this book a method of teaching Latin that is a golden mean between the old and formal method of teaching grammar and the new and apparently haphazard method recently developed of teaching reading. And I think this is really cool. So a lot of what we do in Latin um, as teachers is figure out, do we go grammar method? Do we go reading method? How are you? Uh, things like spoken Latin, which one are you supposed to do? And they're saying off the bat that they're trying to be um, <clears throat> what they call the golden mean, that bridge between the grammar method and the reading method. So I think this book works really well in that regard, that it's a, a taste of both, which I like. Um, and they mentioned that the superficial study of grammar, mainly for recognition, um, they said that the assumption that abundant reading with a superficial study of grammar can't result in real power to read Latin. And I think that's true. If you're just reading and you're never diving into the sort of nuts and bolts of the grammar, you're going to struggle, right? And they, they acknowledge that right off the bat. So they're, they're mentioning here that in their effort to make Latin interesting to their pupils, they've forgotten that the average pupil has, has to feel a power of achievement, a mastery of what he is doing in order to be interested and gain mental satisfaction. <clears throat> now, I really like that line. I know some people might not agree with me, but what they're saying is you have to empower your students to actually learn the language. It's a difficult language at times. Doesn't mean it's impossible, but you can't dumb it down too much. So I really do appreciate that they've said off the bat, they're not dumbing it down because for being honest, I think some of the more modern stuff kind of does, right? We get a little too far into making it interesting and we, we forget that it's, it's not necessarily supposed to be easy. No language is easy. So I really appreciate that right off the bat. They also inc uh, include a great section called To the Pupil, where they're laying out this argument for why someone should learn Latin. And I think it really holds true today, right, in my opinion. So they lay out these questions and they're saying, you know, when you begin studying Latin, you might have people doubting you right? And saying, uh, do you know why it's a very good thing for you to travel this road? People ask you um, why you're taking Latin. Can you give them a good answer? Can you prove to them that Latin is really a living language? And the last question they ask is, can you make them see that you are doing the best thing for yourself by studying Latin? These are the questions my students always face, right? Why do you take Latin? Why are you doing this, right? Um, Latin is not the most popular language. A lot of people don't learn it anymore because a lot of people have questioned, what's the point of this? What's the value? So they're trying to give you, um, uh, the authors are trying to give someone using this textbook an answer as to why you would do this. And I think they do a really good job. So here's the answer that I think is good. So I'll just read it to you. They say, someone may tell you that very few people are studying Latin today. As you travel along the road, you will learn that this is a mistake, for you will find all sorts of people who are anxious to get the most out of life and are finding that a knowledge of Latin is a great satisfaction to them and makes a definite contribution to their happiness. Yes, millions of people today are either studying or have studied Latin. And they continue to say, then, as you continue the study of Latin, you will, uh, you will that you are gaining certain powers, or you will see that you're gaining certain powers that will make, uh, make it easier for you as you grow up. Right. It says you're going to find that you learn to concentrate, to judge, to decide quickly and to persevere, to keep going until you have reached your goal, whatever that may be. These powers are very important to our complex civilization. OK, and they continue by saying, um, finally, right, you and finally, having learned to think and to judge, you will realize that you have also gained the tool that is most fundamental and important in your life, namely a command of language by which you may express your thoughts clearly, adequately and forcefully. So I apologize for reading that to you. I know you can read it on the screen, but I think it's a really great way of approaching this textbook and understanding what they're doing. They're trying to lay out why we're studying this, right? The method that they're using and why anyone would do this. And I think it's a really cool idea because a lot of people say today, like, oh, learn Latin for the SATs, test, things like that. To me, it's never about that. It's your own satisfaction. If you don't want to learn Latin, it's not going to be fun. If you don't find satisfaction in learning it, it's not going to be fun. And I think it's great that they lay that out um, in the beginning of the book saying, this is why we do it for the sake of doing it, right? You don't need to learn Latin, but it's still really great to kind of dive in and get that appreciation for learning language, learning to judge, doing something that's difficult. And at the end of the day, like they said, getting that command of language so you can express your thoughts clearly, adequately, and forcefully. I think that's something that's uh, sometimes missing in our, in our schools, particularly in our public schools. We've kind of fallen off from that. So I really appreciate that that's what they laid out at the beginning of this book. So now let's start with the vocabulary and really dive into the different pieces of this textbook, okay? So here's some pros that I think um, the, the text does really well when it comes to vocabulary. So 
it has limited amount of vocabulary, new vocabulary in each chapter, which I really appreciate. And I'll show you, there's not a ton of words in every chapter. Some textbooks kind of overload you with words you don't need. I think Road to Latin does a really good job of limiting um, that vocabulary. So it's not overwhelming. It also repeats that vocab and builds across chapters. So some books will use so much vocab that you might see it in one chapter and never again, which I don't find particularly useful. So this vocab is good because it keeps repeating over and over again. So the limited amount of vocabulary um, just stays with you across all 50 chapters, which I think is really, really great. The other thing that I find useful is that the vocab is chosen for reading authentic Latin. So you don't have a lot of those random words that you see in some um, textbooks. It's really focused on being able to read Caesar, honestly. Um, so I find that the vocab is much more, much more useful and it shows up in, in real Latin as opposed to just trying to make um, interesting stories for students. The other thing I enjoy is that every chapter has a Latin and daily life section and it highlights English derivatives. I'll show you what that looks like, but I think that's really important important for students too, being able to see how these words impact English, right? Which uh, for most of my students is their first language. So you just that making those connections across languages, I think is really, really important. So here's an example um, of the vocab list. This is from chapter one. And you can see even in the first chapter, the vocab is fairly limited and it's pretty simple, right? Additionally, the authors added some really great notes to help a learner um, best use and understand the list. So you're not just left to try to figure it out. They're trying to help you as you work your way through it. Now, here's the chapter story that uses that vocab. This is from chapter one. And you can see that that limited vocabulary is repeated over and over again within the story. So you can see the word est, right, was one of the vocab words, uh, he, she, or it is. So you're saying the school is, the door is, the window is, the woman is. It's repeating it so many times, you, you kind of get used to it very quickly. You can also see in the second paragraph, puella, girl is one of the words. You have the girl is American. The girl is not a teacher. The girl is a student. The girl is standing. That repetition, I think, is really, really good, particularly the beginning chapters of helping my students understand the vocab in context, not just learning a vocab list, but actually using it to read a story. And I think the book does a really great job of this. Um, like I said, there's others out there that, that use vocab that's either really, really niche, right, that you just don't see. So not to throw my, my friends at Akiramani under the bus, but they spin wool, right, Lanam Trahunt. What do we need this for, right? My students always laugh for years. Why am I learning this? I'd say, I don't know, in case you ever spin wool one day. You just don't need it. So there's not really any of that. I can't think of any of it in Road to Latin, um, where you're having vocab that's only used once in a story. Um, it's much better than that. All, the words are chosen very carefully and they repeat across the story. So I think they do a really good job in that sense. This is the uh, Latin and daily life section as an example. Um, that comes with each chapter's vocab list. So here they're giving some nice derivatives, right? And explanations of what English words come from the chapter's vocab. So this is something that not enough textbooks do in my opinion, um, which I think is really, really sad. But I think the best ones still do this. And the one that comes to mind for me is Wheelock, which is what I learned um, you know, in college learning Latin. And I always appreciated those derivatives where you could see, okay, here's the word Latin and here's 10 different English um, words that come from it. That really helped me understand um, why Latin was useful and connect it. And the same happens for my students. I think having those connections between Latin and English is a great way for students to better understand Latin and use it to enhance their own English in their daily life. So I appreciate this Latin and daily life section. Um, it's not perfect. I think you could always add to it, but the fact that it's there is really, really cool. Now, here's another example of something that they do for the, um, the vocab. Every chapter contains a responde latine section, right? Respond in Latin. So here you have Latin questions that are posed in a way that's easy to understand. So even in chapter one, you can figure out what the question is asking and they give help to, to kind of push you in the right direction too. But students can quickly learn from the answer, uh, to find the answers rather. Um, from the story and shape their responses in Latin. So this is something you see a lot of modern textbook do. Um, Eke Romani, again, is one that does it. And I think it's a really great way to start writing in Latin from the beginning, um, which is important, right? You don't want to just learn the English or never translate. Being able to, to work and craft sentences in the target language is really important for learning, right? For that second language acquisition. So I think this is a great thing that um, the textbook does. And I always appreciate this. Usually between five and 10 questions um, for every single story which is great, right? It just gives a lot of practice for the students. So finally, every chapter contains grammar exercises, right? Which was important, but one is always called write in Latin. And here it's sort of like the responde latine section. It's challenging students to write um, or to start writing in Latin right from the beginning, from chapter one. So the sentences are based on chapter stories. So students can use this section to really um, boost up their grammar and vocab quickly while also writing in Latin, which I think is important. So again, it ties back into the vocab um, because you're using the vocab to write these sentences. I think it does a really good job.
So honestly, in terms of vocabulary cons, I don't have any complaints. I can't think of any. Um, I really like the, the vocab in Road to Latin. I found it really manageable for my students and much more useful than some of the textbooks. Um, the limited vocabulary really helps with their retention and the repetition. Um, it, it just preps students for being able to read authentic Latin down the road. I think they did a really great job, so I have no complaints. So let's move on to the grammar, right? The other part of the textbook. So um, the, the grammar is always really important, right? But it's always a point of contention among teachers because, again, we're endlessly debating what's the best way to present grammar in our classes. Should you start with this? How long do you cover that? When do you do it? So there's no one right way, right? I'll just say that again. There is no one perfect way, and the road to Latin does it pretty effectively, but there are some changes that I make. So I don't particularly love everything they do, but it is a pretty good way to do it. So some pros, each chapter covers only one grammar point. I think that's important. They split the grammar into just one main idea and the chapter covers it. The stories really focus on that too. So some grammar points are spread out across several chapters. So some of the trickier ones, or at least what the authors consider tricky, they've made into two, three, sometimes five chapters. So that's useful um, for a lot of my students. The grammar is presented in a discussion format as opposed to straight up notes, which I like. It's not perfect, but I do like that. And the grammar, like I said, is highlighted and repeated in the stories. So you get a lot of repetition. So here's an example. This is the discussion section for each chapter. So the authors laid out the grammar through a sequence of say, uh, statements and questions. So it encourages this whole class teacher-led discussion so that the students can understand the grammar. So personally, I think it's a great way to start the grammar unit um, for my students. So I like to use these and ask these in class. But at the same time, my students also really like structured notes and examples at times. So I usually supplement this discussion section with my own notes. That could just be a me thing. I don't know. Um, maybe it's just me, but I think um, having more structured notes helps too. So I supplement it a little bit. That being said, for the major points, the authors do actually include some straight up notes or charts. They usually call this um, the rule section and it takes the discussion and it just um, simplifies it down into a short and sweet note or, or example. So I find these really great, right? I think they're, they're really good, but I supplement these, right? Um, so I don't just have my students read this. I think more detailed notes help, but at least they're there, right? So you get a mix of the discussion and straight up grammar rules, which I think is great. The best part of the grammar, though, at least in my opinion, is it connects back to the stories and the vocabulary. So the stories are all written to focus exclusively on that one grammar point so that the students get to see the grammar in context with lots of repetition. So this, I think, is the strength of Road to Latin um, because some of the textbooks are really more focused on the stories being fun or compelling and they're not giving grammar in context. So uh, while some of the stories in Road to Latin might not be so exciting, I'd always take the actual learning of the language more than just making a fun story that doesn't really um, have a ton of grammar practice. So I think Road to Latin strikes a really nice balance in that regard between making it fun and giving you the grammar. The other thing that happens is at the end of each chapter, there's a drill section. So here's where students can practice the grammar through sentences. Um, I think these are also good, but I also find them pretty limited because there's usually only five to 10 sentences for an entire chapter. I understand why the authors did this, right? Because the stories themselves are the grammar practice, but I like to supplement these and add more. So I, I think it's just the more repetition I can give my students, the better. And I feel like sometimes there's not as much repetition as I'd like, but again, maybe it's a me problem. So I also find that the time type of, uh, of questions that the grammar exercises use are very repetitive. It's almost always fill in the blank and translate, so not a ton of variety. I think this could be the textbook showing its age a little bit um, because more modern Latin classrooms use different strategies for acquiring the grammar. But again, at least it's there. It's a good starting point, but I would probably supplement it. Now, the sequence of the grammar is something a lot of people are curious about. So I will say that Road to Latin has a different sequence than what I learned or what I've seen from other textbooks. It's big on a slow and steady approach, which I really enjoy, right? But so for example, students learn one case from the first declension in the first five chapters, right? As opposed to learning it all at once. So some teachers will like this, some students will like it, others are gonna hate it. Personally, I think at the beginning of Road to Latin when my students are just starting out, it's really good, but I do find the pacing a little too slow as we go on. So here's an example, you can see that students don't learn verb conjugation until chapter 11. So for the first 10 chapters, it's all third person, just singular and plural present tense. It's a little bit too slow for my taste, um, but you know maybe that's just me. And again, when they're introduced to verb conjugation, it's in chapter 11, and it's only for first and second conjugation verbs. They don't see third and fourth until chapter 17. So on the one hand, they get a lot of really good repetition, and they have a pretty good idea of, in general, how verb conjugation works through that sort of sheltered practice. But I think we could speed it up too. 
could just be me, um, but I, I tend to speed it up for my students. So here's one last example, right? Third declension is something I find a little bit too much. They spread it out over five chapters. I just don't think that's necessary. But again, it's more of a personal choice. So later on, when the grammar becomes much more difficult, I think some topics like the subjunctive mood, they're still broken up, which is good, but they're also kind of condensed into one chapter, like purpose clauses, result clauses. Um, I don't know. I think, honestly, I lean towards doing it the way Road to Latin did, and I understand their logic. Um, even though I speed it up with my own class, I think for a textbook, for the template, I prefer that it, it moves too slowly than too fast. When it's too slow, it gives me the flexibility to speed things up, which is pretty easy to do. Um, as opposed to trying to stretch out one chapter and to make it more, uh, give more to it, that's a little bit harder. So again, pros and cons to the grammar, it kind of is what it is. It's a personal choice. But overall, I really like the way that Road to Latin lays out the grammar. These are the cons, though. If I had to give some, um, I don't think it's perfect, but I do like it, which is why I use it myself um, in my own classroom. But I think you have to make some tweaks. So the what I do is I take the basic bones of Road to Latin. And I use it to suit the needs of my students, right? I, I tweak it. I think that's totally fine. Everyone should do that, so I get it. So even if a student were to pick this up, though, and go chapter by chapter through the actual book, I think you'd be able to figure it out. It's meant to be a little bit easier, so I get it. The cons, though, that I have is I think the sequence can be a little odd at times, right? Stretching out third declension um, nouns for five chapters isn't exactly how I do it, but that's fine. And I think each chapter could use a bit more practice in terms of those drills, so I like to supplement it. I like the discussion format, but it can be tough for note-taking, so sometimes you have to tweak it. And I think that the more difficult chapter could use a few more um, stories and chapters later on, but again, maybe that's just me. So now we get into, again, the real sort of heart of the textbook, which is the stories, okay? So Road to Latin is a reading method textbook. The idea is that you learn grammar through the context of reading stories, which is what a lot of modern textbooks do. Overall, I think Road to Latin does a great job of this, and in many ways, I think it does it better than some modern texts. And here's why. Here are the pros. So most stories have, uh, sorry, most chapters rather have two stories, which is kind of different. A lot of textbooks have one; they have two. The stories are a mix of culture, history, and a central story following a Roman family, which I appreciate. So the stories are sort of a natural launching point into topics on. Roman history and culture because they focus on it, which is really, really cool. The stories also have mass repetition of vocabulary and grammar, which we've seen. It's all in context, which makes them really great. And the later chapters are adaptations of De Bello Gallico. It's meant for you to be able to read Julius Caesar, uh, De Bello Gallico, book one, which I appreciate, right? It's kind of cool. So here's an example. You can see even in the first five chapters, there's a pretty wide variety, right? So some variety in the beginning. So in the beginning, the story is following a fictional family. You can see it's about the different characters, Roman houses, but still, you get a lot of good um, entries into Roman culture. When you get further into it, so here you can see chapters 26 to 30, now we're getting more stories based on history, mythology, culture. Um, you can see here it's talking about the chariot races, the city of Rome, the founding of Rome. Um, later on, you're getting into Aeneas, right, and Aeneas coming into Italy. So there's a really good variety, um, and I think the students enjoy that, and it keeps them from getting bored. So I like that it's not all based on one story. We get to see different things. So like I said, one of the goals for Road to Latin is to get students ready to read Caesar's De Bello Gallico. And I think it does a really good job of that. The last eight chapters are adaptations of, of De Bello Gallico book one. You can see here, De Gallia Omni. Um, that's going to be talking about, you know, all Gaul is divided into three parts. You're going to see it right off the bat. So this has helped my students transition into that uh, reading of unadapted Latin. And I think Road to Latin does a really nice job of that. That being said, it is geared towards Caesar. And I know Caesar is falling out of favor with the AP Latin curriculum, at least in the United States, right? So I'm not sure how useful this is is going to be a few years from now um, when Caesar's kind of maybe not on there. But at the same time, I love reading Caesar. I think it's great. So I like it in my own classroom. And I think if you're interested in reading Caesar, this is a great way um, to, to kind of ease into it and be able to read authentic Latin. So I guess it's kind of up to the, the teacher and student preferences, honestly. But here's an example of one of the stories, right? From early on in Road to Latin, you can see this story is about the Trojan War. It's a fan favorite for my students, right? So a lot of books try to stay focused on their main story, usually about a, a fictional family, but I really like that Road to Latin breaks out of that um, and gives and gives stories that are just different, right? Um, and, and at times it just gives students, uh, you know, level appropriate readings about a variety of topics. So it lets me use the stories, like I said, as a launching point for other discussions and projects. So I really like that. And at the same time, they're always focused on the grammar, which is perfect for the actual learning of Latin. They never deviate from the grammar points at hand, which I appreciate.
Another element of the Road to Latin textbook that um, is good, I like it, but it definitely shows its age of the photos. So it's not anyone's fault. The book is from the 1930s, but I don't find the pictures particularly engaging anymore. Um, they seem very old fashioned uh, for a class in 2024, but you know they're there and they're there if you need them, which I think is a big help. And it lets teachers do a variety of activities with their students. So for example, one of my favorite things to do is show the picture and ask the students what they see in Latin, right? So I'll ask them in Latin, what do you see? And they have to respond in Latin using the new vocab and the grammar. So in that sense, I'm really appreciative that the pictures are even there because some books just don't have pictures at all, which I find very tough to do, right? That's kind of old school. But in this uh, in this sense, I think they're a little dated. So in my version of the book, I've added many more modern photos and basically supplemented it. Um, but they're there, which is good, which I really do appreciate. You might have to tweak them, but at least they're there. OK, so while I do love the stories in Road to Latin, that's why I chose this book, I think there are some drawbacks. I don't think they're particularly um, difficult to fix any of these problems, but it's still important to know the limitations beforehand if you're choosing to use it. So some stories show their age and they have those problematic lines, happy slaves, things like this. You got to tweak some of them a little bit. Some of the stories are a bit too repetitive, particularly in the beginning, uh, in the beginning and don't advance a plot. It's kind of a preference, but I wish there was a little more, but I understand, right? Slow and steady. So some of the early on stories might be a little tough. And the lack of one cohesive story, I don't particularly mind it, but it might be less interesting to your students. They might like following the family and enjoy that. You're not really going to get that in Road to Latin. So again, that's more of a personal preference. But let's just wrap this video up and give you my overall thoughts, okay? I think Road to Latin is an excellent text for those Latin one and two students, right? Kind of early on that first, second year, maybe even to a third year. The fact that it's out of copyright makes it adaptable. You can take it, you can tweak it, do whatever you want. You can't necessarily do that with modern textbooks. You don't want to get sued. So I like that it's out of copyright and we can do what we want, right? That's what my channel and my website is all about. The other thing is teachers are probably going to have to do this, right? You're going to have to skip around, supplement. So it kind of works that it's not just a set textbook. OK, it's a great launching point into Roman history. Um, De Bello Gallico, I, I use it to launch into Eutropius. It's really good for history, not so much for poetry. So it's not really going to help any in any regard for Latin poetry. It's not part of the textbook, which, you know, could be problematic when you get later on into Latin. It's free online, right, which is great, but it's not easy to get a physical copy, honestly. So you'd have to print it out. It's a few hundred pages long. That might be trickier if you're someone who likes a physical textbook. You're not going to get that from the Road to Latin. There is, though, a growing community of teachers and learners, which I think is great. There's some of us who are kind of uh, on Facebook. I know it's a little old school, but still, um, that are sharing resources. So it's not nearly as big as some of the other texts, but it's there and it's growing, which I think is cool. But if you're looking for a community, a lot of help, uh, you'd probably be better off going with Ecce Romani or Cambridge Latin, right? These are ones that have been around for decades um, and there's a big community of support, but there are a growing number of, of teachers who are switching over to this because it is a really good textbook, right? So I don't know, there's pros and cons to all of it. But at the end of the day, I would highly recommend this textbook. That's why I use it. That's why I have this channel making these videos. Um, it's the one I use in my own in my own classroom. I think it's awesome. I'd recommend at least giving it a shot. It has a very unique voice and perspective from its amazing authors that I think a lot of my modern textbooks just don't have. I like the style. I like that it's trying to balance the reading method um, with, with some heavy grammar and not going too easy, but also not too difficult. I think it's a really nice middle point and blending point of a lot of things that we do today, which is great because this is from the 1930s and we're still using a lot of these methods today, a hundred years later. Um, I just think that's really cool. So again, if you're a student, give it a shot. Um, there's a lot you could find. If you're a teacher and you're looking for something different, again, I'd recommend you give it a shot. Um, I think it's definitely worth your time. So hopefully that gave you an insight into what Road to Latin is all about and how it works. And now it's up to you, right? Take it for what it is. Um, if you're a teacher, feel free to use it. If you're a student, tr try it, right? If you're trying to learn Latin, I'd highly recommend it. But either way, now you know a little more about it and hopefully you're feeling more confident to give it a shot. Good luck.